Welcome to Breadboarding. In this video, we're going to be installing the first ever release of Microsoft Windows, that was Windows 1.0 from November 1985. So this is video 61 in the Breadboard 8088 PC series. In this video, we're going to first of all do a little bit of tidy up of the CGA card left over from last time, and then we're going to be installing and running Windows 1.0. So this is our high level plan. The first part of the series, we developed an Anacomp 8088. So this was basically an LED display and keypad with a monitor, which allowed us to do some uh, simple testing. We then extended this into a basic floppy disk PC with a monochrome display adapter, compatible video controller, PS2 keyboard, floppy disk controller, and we were able to boot and run MS-DOS 3.30 from floppy disk. We then went on to add an IDE disk controller and IDE disk and booting off disk. And we've just completed developing the CGA video controller. And the reason why we needed this was to be able to run an early version of Windows. So let's just take a quick look at the CGA board as it stands at the moment. So you'll see it's quite messy, but there's a lot of there's about 32 test leads coming over all around here as I've been uh, debugging it. There was just one issue left over really from last time and we managed to eliminate most of the CGA snow. So this is interference that the original IBM CGA card used to suffer from. But if the CPU is updating the video RAM whilst the cathode ray tube controller chip was accessing it, then it would generate interference on the screen that looked a bit like snow, certainly in black and white modes. And what I've done is I've done a little bit of tweaking around here. You can see there's an extra chip in here, which I'm no longer using. I was trying out various delays and things. And what I've done is I've managed to get it a lot better than it was. Still occasionally get the odd bit of interference, but uh, it, it's much, much better than it was. So let's have a look at what those changes I needed to do were. So originally, this chip down the bottom here has a clock signal and that clock signal is coming from up here. And what it basically is, is the dot clock that comes in here, but then it's gated by the CPU activity. So CPU activity is a, an output here that says that we're either reading or writing to the video RAM. And this clock here is turned on and off by that activity. So we only get the clock during the time of accessing the video RAM. Now, in fact, in our playing around with this, what I tried is actually putting a second pin with that clock on and to my surprise I found out that when I included rules using the clock from here rather than the clock embedded actually on pin 1 which is a default clock for the whole chip, then in fact it actually made a difference. Now theoretically there's not much difference between the, the signal being routed from here to the logic in here and from from here but it does seem to have made a difference and we're dealing with probably five ten nanoseconds at a time so really it doesn't take very much to cause a difference here and all i've done is i've added a, a spare pin here i've called this the cpu activity dot clock cpu activity dot clock or cad clock for short and the only thing I needed to do here for the rules was where we've got CAD clock. This originally was just the, the clock CLK and wherever we had CLK here, I've just changed it for the CAD clock and that seems to have made a difference. So if we just have a look at the video output and I'll run up the test programs that I've been using. So the first test is just clearing the screen. It should have a flashing cursor on the top left hand side. Then we've got our 80 by 25 task pattern with all the various character sets and the combinations of foreground and background color attributes. Then with blinking, then we've got our 40 by 25 mode zero. Then we've got two graphics modes. Now these tests should result in black screens and where we have any pixels on there, then it indicates the test has failed. So the initial screen has been cleared okay. There's a little bit of interference as it updates in the four color mode and then the black and white mode is clear and then just one of the reads probably has a problem failing there. So it's a it's pretty good. It's a lot better than, than it was previously. This screen here occasionally uh, shows this problem. If I rerun this test again, I'll probably find that it uh, it would work OK. Run it a second time and in fact it's come out clear. So it is intermittent, but it's a very minor issue. This test program, what it does is it updates every single pixel to an ascending from 0 to 255, then reads back the value and then 
if the value is okay, it just leaves it at black and updates it to black. If there is a problem reading it back, then it will write in 255. So in fact, the number of pixels where you have the problem is not very significant. It's just that the test. And the reason for trying to get the black and white mode, the high res mode working is this is the mode that Windows 1.0 uses. So now let's boot up DOS. So just run one or two of the tests we were running previously just to check that everything's behaving itself. So CGA comp was the main one we were using. And we'll just run the snow test. So when this was running first time, uh, we ended up lots of uh, green lines on the top third of the screen. We run it now. There's the odd little flicker every now and then. Occasionally an attribute might get changed, but it's looking a lot better than it was previously. We'll just try the other tests. And then we'll just do the high res test. So you can see that's all coming out fairly clean, which is great. So let's have a look at the Windows 1.0 documentation and see what we actually need to do to install it. So here's a scan of the original Windows 1.0 documentation. If we go to page 16, it tells us what do we need. We need a PC running DOS. So we're running DOS 3.3.0, at least 256K of memory. So we're running 512K, so that should be okay. Monochrome graphics monitor or a color monitor. Now we've got a color monitor and we need a graphics adapter card. So Windows supports several graphics adapter cards, including the IBM color graphics monitor adapter or CGA adapter, which is the one that we're running. Now we can use a mouse for this. Now the early versions of Windows didn't support PS2 mice. I think PS2 support came in in Windows 2 and Windows 3 and I don't have a bus mouse or a serial mouse. So we're going to run this initially without the mouse, but then we'll add the PS2 mouse support and we can copy a mouse driver from a later version of Windows into Windows 1.0 and it should work. So originally Windows 1.0 supported installation on a two floppy disk drive system or to a hard disk. So we're obviously going to use the hard disk. Now, the only thing about this is that it doesn't actually support installing from anything other than the floppy disk A drive. So what we have to do is go to the A drive, type setup, press enter, and then follow the instructions on screen. Fairly straightforward. So rather than using the A drive, I've already copied all of the files onto the hard disk. And what we can do is use the DOS subst command to actually map a particular folder to the A drive. They've rebooted after disabling the floppy disk drive. So we'll just check to see that the C drive is OK. And we'll just show that the A drive no longer exists. What we're going to do now is to substitute the Win103 install folder for the A drive. We go to the A drive and then the directory listing. These are all the files for the Windows 1.03 installation. So now we need to do is to type setup and we're going to not set up a mouse and use CGA no printers as we go through here and set up the keyboard for the UK. Okay, so that's finished. So we'll just try running up Windows now, see if it runs. It's 
So there we have it. We have Windows 1.0 starting up. In the early days, only the EGA extended graphics adapter actually had sufficient RAM in it to be able to do color. So CGA graphics that we've got here is just doing 640 pixels across by 200, but it's not too bad as it stands at the moment. Now, what I'm gonna do is in fact, go through a bit of the keyboard learning Windows tutorial. So there's about 12 exercises leading you through how to actually use Windows 1.0 with the keyboard. And then there's a section three is actually learning Windows with the mouse. So we'll look at the mouse in the next video once I get the PS2 mouse working. So let's go back to Windows 1.0 and go through this tutorial, which, which covers opening up a document in Notepad and tiling calculator and the MS-DOS executive and doing a bit of window manipulation. So the first thing we're gonna do is just to do Alt V and only show program. So at the moment it's showing all of the files in the Windows folder and just by showing programs makes things a little bit uh, simpler. So what we're gonna do first of all is have a look at Notepad. And you'll see a lot of the screen furniture here is what we would understand from modern windows. However, the icon in the top right hand corner is for resizing the window with the mouse and with the keyboard to actually get to the control menu. Then we do the alt space bar to toggle between applications. We use alt tab, which is very much like current windows. In Windows 1.0, there weren't really any uh, function keys. So Alt F4, which is closed window in later versions of Windows, didn't exist in this version. And Escape to get rid of uh, any particular menu. So the first stage in the tutorial is actually about opening a document. And there's a to-do list. So. What we can do here is using the tab key to navigate around. Generally you're using the space bar to select particular options and we can also use the enter key to take the default action. So then what it was actually trying to get us to do is to use the alt search find function to look for A and we want to do match case. So we use the tab key, space bar, and then enter. So that's actually searched for the first day. And if we do Alt search, find next, goes to the next one. And if we then do find next again, can't find it. So the next stage in the tutorial is actually to tile the MS-DOS executive and notepad side by side. And what we need to do first of all is to Alt tab to the MS-DOS executive. So you can see down the bottom there, that's now highlighted and Alt space bar. And what we can now do is to move it. So if we type M and what you can see here is there's a, an icon now. And if we move this over to the middle of the right hand side of the window and press enter, it then tiles the two programs. And then what we're going to do is to run the calculator app. So with the MS-DOS executive title bar is actually highlighted. So now we can just move down the arrow. And if we hold the shift and enter, what it will do is open calculator, but it'll open it minimized as the icon down the bottom. So you can see down the bottom now that we've got the calculator is down the bottom there. So now we want to expand the calculator. So if we do Alt tab until we've got the calculator selected, Alt space bar, and then we want to move. And if we move this into the middle here and press enter, we're now going to get the calculator tiled as well. Then we can also move the windows as well. So if we select ms.executive, then move. What we can do is to again move this and if we move this down to the bottom of the notepad to, to do list. It will then retile the windows. And then we can also resize the windows as well. So if we go to notepad now 
and change it to size, you'll see now that we've got a little icon in the middle of the window. And if we move that to the right, what we will see is it will show us where our window will be resized to and then press enter when we're happy with the size. Then I think the tutorial went on to use the calculator app to work out the cost of some tickets. So that's £50.25. Now, in fact, the tutorial doesn't actually get you to copy it, but in this particular case, we're going to copy the value. Now we're going to shrink the calculator app. So I'm going to make it an icon and the other two windows resize. And then we're actually going to go to the notepad and in how much. We're going to paste in the value. Then we're going to zoom the notepad window. So this makes it take up the full screen. So we can see more of the document there with our edits from our calculation there. Then we're going to save this. So Alt F, save as. And I think it's suggested mylist.txt. We can either press enter or tab and then space will also select the current button. So we're going to close the application. So C for close. And then to finish the tutorial, we then actually close down windows with the special end session. So this basically is showing that Windows 1.03 is working on the breadboard PC. In the next video, what I'm going to be doing is looking at adding the PS2 mouse support getting the DOS drivers and also getting Windows drivers to actually see the mouse. And then we'll go through Windows 1.0 again and have a look at, in a little bit more detail at some of the other apps and some of the other Windows applications that were available from the very beginning. So thanks for watching. If you don't want to miss out on future videos, then please hit subscribe. And if you found it interesting, please hit like. It just helps to make the videos available to more people. Thanks for watching.